Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's no surprise cryptocurrency has gone on a bit of a dip over the last few hours, somewhere between 5 and 15% across the board. So let's get into the news and the charts for these cryptocurrencies. And I have a few special ideas in today's video for you. So stick around for those. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, this has the details on the SMSF setup. So that's for the Aussies wanting to invest their retirement fund into cryptocurrency. So go and check out this video here. It's got the details right there. Maybe you missed it. It's not a very sexy title when it comes to retirement funds, but nonetheless, it's right there. Now I've got another video coming up today as well, uh, looking at crypto hedge fund with Invictus Capital. So stick around for that on the channel too. As you can see, we're nearly at 100,000 subscribers. So get us to the 100,000 ASAP. Click the subscribe down below and bell notification icon. And if you want to be entered into the draw to win my special giveaway coming up as we cross 100,000, go down to the description, click the link, put your email address into the newsletter, the free newsletter down there, and you'll be entered into the draw to win the giveaway. So I'll be announcing that very, very shortly. All right, guys, like the video up, you know what to do. First up, I wanted to chat about some of these cryptos that I continue to see pop up in the comment section. So I wanted to make mention to you guys, if you want me to do a video on some of these cryptos that you continue to shill, for example, Dent, and another one that continues to pop up is Pundi X. Let me know in the comments down below, leave the ticker symbol and the percentage gain that you are hoping to get from it. And my idea here is to make a video on specifically these cryptocurrencies and it'll be a full video looking at the charts on those cryptos. Now I want you to put the percentage gain because I want to see whether you're realistic with what you think can happen or if you're just shilling something. So uh, if you don't have that next to it, I'm not going to cover it. It could just be someone coming across the channel, putting their their shill in and then moving on. All right, so that's what I'm going to do with those ones there. And if you want to follow along with the portfolio, SwiftX, there's a link to that in the description down below. So let's start with the Google Trends. And again, just going to quickly compare Cardano and NFT. They've been the main two things in the news lately. NFTs, now I'm just looking at United States. Normally I do worldwide. Looking worldwide, the figures are completely different or uh, very much different. Uh, NFT, really huge in the US. Cardano is also starting to dip now after a bit of a spike. But if we go to worldwide, the gap narrows. And we can see the NFTs weren't as high as they have been in the US. So it's a very popular uh, search topic in the US. That's all I wanted to mention there. And uh, pretty much just have a look across the world. Basically, NFTs big in Asia and Cardano big in Europe, US, well, Canada, Australia, etc. So that's pretty much the trend at the moment. Next piece, fear and greed. We have seen a dip. In the fear and greed, we're down to 66. Uh, ideally, we want to continue to see it fall and just consolidate. That's a, essentially where we want to be buying in. So, you know, it's buying the dip. And it's like, when do you buy the dip? Well, I like to have a few factors coming together. Of course, the swing chart. Of course, I want to see the volume and the fibs all playing out. That's ideally where I want to see this. And I want to see some sort of accumulation, not just a quick spike and reverse out of it. The greed is wearing off, which is a good thing, a nice time to be buying. We don't want to be buying when everyone else is greedy, but we haven't had many opportunities lately. So that's where we're sitting. We are dropping back. Now, let's move on to some of the news before we get to the charts. The first piece I want to look at is Bitcoin, the balance on exchanges. So this is all exchanges. This is from Glassnode, as you can see here. Balance on exchanges, all exchanges, Bitcoin, and then the price. So there is a very distinct correlation between the uh, Bitcoin coming off exchanges, which is the orange line here. Basically, it, it topped out in around mid-March, exactly a year ago. And it's been on the decline ever since. And the price of Bitcoin bottomed out around mid-March. I think it was about the 23rd that we had the low at 3850 And we've just seen a recent top out. So this is pretty interesting to note. I know you've probably seen it across Twitter or uh, other articles, but we'll just keep a track on it uh, from time to time. Essentially, it's a pretty it's a pretty clear trend at the moment, and I assume this will change in time. It might be that uh, the price will then drop, and then the Bitcoin will continue to drop. We just don't know. But at the moment, 
the pattern is very clear there. Moving on to the daily huddle, I'm gonna give a quick little shout out here. They've featured me on this, two hidden NFT crypto assets could surge by 20X. It's a video I put out just a few days ago. So if you want to check that out, there it is, or go across to the channel and you can see it a couple of videos back, one of these back here. All right, thanks daily huddle. Moving on, coin gape. Now we're on here, we've got big whales are buying the dip while smaller ones are selling. Essentially, it's just reiterating that same tweet that we saw that Bitcoin is moving off exchanges, price is increasing. And from this point, it looks like the weaker hands are dropping the ball and the bigger hands are picking up. That's essentially what is uh, what the narrative of this article is. Big news on the Turkish lira. The lira plunges Bitcoin interest among Turkey's poor spikes. So people are trying to flee the Turkish lira. Turkish lira plunged by 15%. Uh, the president appoints a new central bank governor. Not good news for the people of Turkey, especially when your currency is dying in the ass compared to the US dollar and pretty much everything else. Now I've got the chart up here of the Turkish lira. That looks awful. They, they pretty much started in 2013 and the depreciation of that somewhere around, we're getting very close to 80%. They've lost 80% of their purchasing power. That's that's not a good sign. So, well, I mean, every, anyone could say that really, definitely not a good sign. 80% down, mind blowing. Now, I'm, I'm pretty much speechless on that of how much a country's currency can devalue in such a, I mean, it's a short period of time overall. It's only mid 2013 and currently it's uh, now it's, getting closer to mid 2021. So keep an eye on that. I think this will probably happen across the board as we move into more money printing and money printing across the board through many countries around the world. Australia, you know, we just printed 100, 200 billion last year. I know the total they were looking at was around 500 billion spread across around four years, which was about 33 or 35% of our total GDP. So this, not a good sign. But America continues to print more money, which is why we all continue to stay above board. You know, the Aussie dollar has improved in value because basically we haven't printed as much as the US looking in terms of our own GDP and what we can produce. Bitcoin continues to trade sideways as Q1 draws to a close. Now, I'm only bringing this one up because I thought potentially there's going to be some bigger players selling as the end of the quarter approaches. If you need to rebalance your books or, you know, your, your funds they have to basically sell off some of the assets to balance those out. So it was just a reminder that some of these falls happen because of quarter endings or monthly endings or end of financial years, those sort of things. Uh, that's about it for this article. This article here is Bitcoin mining firm Greenage plans to go public. The company is planning to become a NASDAQ listed company through a merger with support.com. Now the bit I've got highlighted down here is for the 12 months ending to February 28th, the company mined 1,186 Bitcoin at a net variable cost of around 2,800. Now they say this is because of the lowest cost natural gas in North America. So if the energy you are using is very cheap, then of course it's gonna be cheap for you to mine Bitcoin. Now, if a lot of Bitcoin miners happen to be able to mine Bitcoin very, very cheaply, this is just my theory of course, then they're obviously making huge profits. You know, this is what, at the moment, about $53,000 profit that they're making per Bitcoin. Of course, they have to pay probably staff and legal costs and rent and new equipment, etc. I get that. But overall, if you're making such a huge profit, that could lead to more miners wanting to uh, basically come on board, which is what the article goes on to say that uh, will then lead these guys to be able to sell off their Bitcoin with huge gains and that can also dump the market. But long term, we obviously have the view that Bitcoin is going to six figures. So this is just a matter of playing that catch up, more people coming on board, they're able to mine Bitcoin cheaper and that obviously brings more competition and that raises the price. So this is just a whole ebb and flow of the price going up and down just to keep in mind, uh, you know, to keep in the back of our minds that Bitcoin just doesn't go up in a straight line. There are other factors determining the price. Even if the entire news uh, sentiment is all bullish, there are still things which move the price, which don't matter to the rest of us where we're just like, well, Bitcoin should be going up because it's the new gold. You know, there, there are other real factors behind all of this. 
IoT releases public beta of brand new Firefly wallet. I'm only just bringing this up because IOTA hasn't been in the news that much lately. I've covered it a few times. The coin looks like it's breaking out at the moment, especially with this dip going on, which is crazy. It shows a decent sign of strength there. Firefly wallet, and then uh, the wallet looks like it can do NFTs and digital digital identities, which of course are essentially just NFTs. So that's a pretty big positive for IOTA after they've basically had a very, very tough time in the, uh, in the market. Not much has happened. They had a few problems uh, around 2018. Looking good, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot going on there now. Moving on, last piece here is, second last piece, Bitcoin is more of a substitute for gold than the dollar, Fed Chair Powell says. So all I wanna mention here is the Fed Chair, uh, Jerome, Jerome Powell says substitute for gold, inverted commas, backed by nothing, substitute for gold, essentially trying to move it away from the idea that it's going to replace a currency. That's pretty much what the article goes on here. Then the last piece is also with uh, Fed's pal again. Peers aren't rushing into digital currency. I'm just looking at this. Central banks are at varying stages of developing digital currencies. So the yellow, which is Bahamas, they're already being used. So they're already use, using a CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Pink, South Africa, China, India. Uh, this is Thailand in here. What else we got? All right, a few other little countries here. Is this one, what's next to India? Is this Pakistan, Bangladesh? I'm pretty sure it's Pakistan over this side, Bangladesh over here somewhere. So they're all in plans to use an issue CBDCs. Light blue, I'm not gonna mention all those, you can see it here, basically Europe and Russia, actively exploring, and then the dark blue, US, Australia, uh, a few other, you know, Egypt, etc., cetera, uh, Japan, Korea, I'm mentioning all the countries now because I love geography. Basically, they're conducting research. All right, I'm just gonna leave that there and leave my geography skills to another video. So let's move on to the charts and look at Bitcoin first up, see where the price is at. Red, here we go, red, 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 what are we down? So today we were down over the last few hours and now we've all seemed to push back up. Some of them are in the, in the light green of zero to 1%. Bitcoin, 54,400 overall. I've got it on a weekly. If you look at weekly, there's not much that has really changed. It, it, when you sc scroll out, nothing is nothing's different. The daily, sweet. We have had a nice push down. Good sign. We've begun to test this low at 53,221. So we're at 53,700 is the lowest point at the moment, 715. And ideally, I want to see it break and then test these levels, potentially come back, reaccumulate in this zone of between the 40s and the 55s. That would be ideal. Just get in here, hold the ground for a bit longer, and uh, then build our base while the altcoins go on a final run, and then Bitcoin can steal the show again. That is I the ideal situation, so that we can pull out some of those gains of the altcoins, push it back into Bitcoin. Bitcoin takes off, we let all the altcoins rest, all of our dollars are going up because we're sitting in Bitcoin. Gives us time to go and research some altcoins and then spin those altcoins, uh, spin those Bitcoin gains back into some altcoins. And that's essentially what I talk about in the Investor Accelerator, where we're looking at rotating our profits into different assets. And currently, the only asset worthwhile mentioning is cryptocurrency. Everything else is being left for dead. Um, if you've got other ideas, let me know in the comments down below. I also have a keen interest in land, real estate it is, but there's just nothing beating Bitcoin and cryptocurrency at the moment. So drop your comments down below. If you wanna know more about the Investor Accelerator, 10% off until the end of the month. Get your coupon code in the description down below. Put your email address in, you'll receive that on email. Make sure you sign up before the end of the month. There's only 100 of those coupon, co coupon codes left. So be sure to do that. We've got about 250 uh, investors in that group now. All right, let's move across to look at the other majors that we checked out yesterday. So Ethereum is also on the cards here. Nice breakdown. That's what we want to see. Push down, break these lows. Volume isn't as high as I would love, but can't complain. At least the volume is higher. So if we get another push down on much stronger volume, that's going to be a good sign. I, what we're looking at here is this. See the volume, big push down, and then the market just could not force its way down any further. It tried, volume was light, and it just got bought straight back up. So 
very good support, I would say around the 1400 level, which of course is the old all time high in 2018, January 2018, nearly gonna say 2017. So yeah, we've got a, a fairly decent chunk of support at those levels at the 1400. So I don't see it going below there, even if it does, it, I don't think it'll be for very long. And it's not that far away from where we are now at 1700. I mean, 15, 17, call it 20% if you want. In cryptocurrency, not a big deal. And then I think Ethereum's got a decent run on it. You know, from the previous weeks, we have been looking at a five to 11 week pullback. And currently we're in our fifth week. All right, so now we are looking for any sort of sign that we're gonna build up again to break out. That was on my community post on YouTube, uh, which we can have a look at here. Plus there's a couple of other polls which you guys can get involved with. Next big caps, you guys are mentioning those there. Must crash real estate cycle and well and truly further back we're looking at ethereum this is over two weeks ago and i'm looking here at five to eleven week pullback because of these good giant swings of around 24 to 25 weeks on the way up 11 weeks to break the top and that's why i'm saying around half of that time to the full time frame to break above the top again we're pretty much on track with that so ethereum let's have a look at cardano as one of our last cryptos and then i'll call it a day for today's video so Cardano US $1.12, could we call it a double top? At this point, it's looking like that, but it's still in consolidation mode. So that's not a bad thing for Cardano. We can hold these levels. Let's hold above uh, my yellow line here around that 80 cents. You know, I refer back to that 75 to 80 cent level quite often. We've had some big lows at those levels. You can see the volume on these bars and then we got the volume at the top. So we're just playing some catch up. We've got big volume at the top again. Let's see if we can hold around the 75 to 80 cent level, reaccumulate before we can take off again. Cardano a, uh, USD was looking good. ETH still holding its ground only just. Had a few little moves there, a little spike down and we're reversing again. <laughs> These little yellow lines are what I drew on a couple of days ago. So we're kind of following a similar pattern. Last one I'll look at is ADA BTC. Again, similar sort of pattern, spike down, uh, on the increased volume from the last couple of days, potentially a, a uh, basically a stopping volume for now, but it's just not as big as I would like to see. This is the sort of volume I want to see on spike downs, like well and truly up there, just to get that reversal going. All right, I, I did say last one, but I want to look at one more ETH BTC because we haven't looked at that for a little while. So that's ETH BTC 0.031 support level still holding. That's what we want to see. It is getting a little weaker, volume is drying up, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a spike down. Not a great sign, but I'm still hopeful that we'll get some good push out of Ethereum long term. If this means it is just drying up, that the that the volume is drying up because we're gonna get a push up soon, that's also the case, all right? So I am still accumulating in this area. This is probably gonna be the final time that I'll accumulate Ethereum, uh, just because I, I don't see it as being a uh, good risk reward the further up we go uh, against Bitcoin that is. So this is still looking pretty good overall as a reasonable area. If we start to get the breakdown and break below these lows, things are looking bad, but I don't think we're gonna get there for now. I think Ethereum is gonna go on a run very soon. All right, guys, that's it for the update. Crypto still looking good. We did have the push down. We want to see those. We definitely wanna see the push down clear out some of those lows. It's really healthy for the market to do that on the way up and start to reaccumulate again. If you love the sound of that, let me know. Hit me in the comments down below. Remember, put your cryptos that you wanna shill, mention those ticker symbols and the percentage gain that you are looking for and I will look to do a video in the future with those shilled cryptocurrencies. Follow me on Instagram, uh, daily updates, Q and A's, updates of the retirement fund, somewhere around 230 grand today. Check it out over there and uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Get us to 100,000 subscribers and I'll see you guys at the next video. All right, until then, have more fun to get more done.